security perimeter, right? That that building he was on was outside of the That's area correct. that was usually checked. How far outside of it was it? Uh, we'll have that information for you. It was some distance outside of the Colonel, security perimeter. Colonel, can you come out and report that there were uh, people who saw someone on the roof and tried to alert authorities? We're following up on those. I will tell you that I am aware of those, and uh, and I am aware that uh, law enforcement had responded to a number of reports of suspicious activity. Um, the specific response to this will be all part of the after action, but yes, law enforcement was responding uh, to check on several suspicious occurrences. What were the other suspicious occurrences? Uh, that will all be part of the investigation. So you said that you're close to identifying? Well, they have yet to tell us what this other suspicious activity was at the Trump rally yesterday. And I doubt that they ever will tell us, but we can all sleep easy tonight knowing that the FBI will be leading the investigation into this matter. And I'm sorry, but that just sounds so ridiculous to say out loud. That That's like saying, hey, the number one suspect in this case will be leading the investigation of this case. I mean, how can we expect the same government and the same agencies that hate Donald Trump and that have been trying to take him down for years, how can we trust that they will conduct a thorough and honest investigation? And I mean, I think a lot of us think that there's just a possibility that maybe one of these three letter agencies at the very least had knowledge that something was going to go down yesterday. I don't know. I have a lot of questions about the security at this event. It really doesn't make any sense. You have to suspend your belief and you have to believe that the most well-trained bodyguards, the secret service, the most well-trained personnel, security personnel in the world, you would have to believe that they all have the brains of a four-year-old toddler to believe that what happened yesterday could have happened. Now, maybe these people are just that stupid. Maybe we give all of these people way too much credit. But the fact that this went down the way it did, I have questions, and I'm not the only one. And... I say this, I want you all to understand, I'm not someone that's like, I don't feel as if I belong to any certain political party. I will call things how I see it. I don't belong to a cult. I don't allow a group of people to think for me. I call things how I see it. And the way it looks is like they've been desperately trying to take down Trump. I know a lot of people absolutely hate the guy and a lot of people absolutely love the guy. Trust me, it's all been crammed down our throats for the last eight years. We get it. But just calling things how I see it, I'm a straight shooter. It looks like they've been trying to do whatever they can to get rid of him. Either throw him in jail, tarnish his name to the point that no one would support him, but that's not working. Convicting him of all of these felonies, that didn't work. And if you ask me, I think that debate was the last straw. Joe Biden got embarrassed so badly at that debate. And the way the polls were looking, and the fact that Joe Biden wasn't stepping down, it's like, all right, they went ahead and tried to take Trump out. And I think they're going to try it again. And we have grown so numb in this country to stuff like this that people don't realize the ramifications of something like this, people don't realize that this is not the same USA that we grew up in. This is not the same country that we woke up in a couple of days ago. Things are going to get bad. And yesterday should be a perfect example of that. But things were getting bad even before that. But... I've just been combing through all of these different interviews, listening to what people have to say about what transpired yesterday. And there was a doctor in the crowd that was right there when everything played out, was right there next to the victim. And he spoke out a lot about what he saw. And I want you all to listen to what he has to say. 
So I'm going to roll this news clip, and then I'm going to be right back with more thoughts. And joining us tonight right now is Dr. Joseph Mine, who I am told helped carry one of those who was injured out of that rally. Uh, Dr. Mine, thank you for being with us here on News Nation. Tell me tonight what you saw, uh, what you did, and how you jumped into action. Um, well, there was a, I was attending the rally. I was in the seated section in front of the bleachers on the far left of the uh, of the area of, of the rally area. So it'd be you know the very far right of where Doctor, or, sorry, where Donald Trump was speaking from the podium. And you know, okay. so there was there was a jumbotron. So I was I was kind of I had an iPhone. I was running the video on Donald Trump at the podium, and you know I had to kind of move the iPhone over because the um, his teleprompter was in the way, so I didn't really get a good video of him, you know, in front of the, you know, at the podium. So I was kind of, you know, I was I was removing my 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 vision between what I was looking at between Jumbotron and President Trump, and you know, as I was running my camera, President Trump, in my right hand, I was looking over to the left at the Jumbotron, and that's when I heard the gunfire. Okay. So I, you know, I heard seven shots, rapid succession. You know, it was seven shots were fired probably within a second or two. It was under mm -hmm. maybe a second and a half. Right. Um, the first few shots, you know, hit people and the bleachers that are right in front of me. A man got a gunshot wound to the head and was killed instantaneously. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a direct hit. Um, he immediately, his body immediately fell to the, uh, to the, into the bleachers. I didn't initially see anyone else get hit because, you know, as soon as I saw the man get shot in the head, I, I immediately looked back over because like immediately I was, it was apparent that they're trying to kill the president. Like the rounds are coming from my right, my left to right and they're shooting at the podium. And as I looked to the right, I saw either the, the teleprompter that was on Trump's right, it got hit or it looked like it got knocked over. It was in the process of getting knocked over. But that's when I noticed that President Trump got hit in the right ear. Like it looked like a piece of his ear got sliced off from one of the rounds. And, you know, he would just look to the left, and he had not done that. Um, you know, Donald Trump was a hair breath away from being assassinated. Um, yet he had not looked to the left quickly. He would have had it, you know, he would have got hit directly in the head. Um, and, you know, and immediately the Secret Service jumped, you know, they jumped, pulled him down. But what's amazing to me is, like I said, right after those seven shots was how fast, you know, I, I, I don't know, I, I didn't get a good look. I, I assume there was a there was a Secret Service sniper somewhere. But it amazes me. It would amaze me. It was almost robotic how fast it was. Like, they returned fire. Yeah. Like, it was within yeah, a second. I mean, yeah. you know, almost instantaneously, rounds are coming the other direction back to where the, the, you know, going back to where the source of the original gunfire was. I mean, it was almost instantaneously. I mean, it was, I was absolutely amazed. Like, I know enough about, you know, because I own guns. I go hunting and I go shooting all the time. Um, you know, so I knew immediately it was gunfire, and I knew immediately I saw where the rounds were going, and it just amazed me how fast the Secret Service, you know, answered, you know, returned fire. It was I was absolutely right. stunned. Like, you know, it's kudos yeah. to them. Like, I, I, I don't know how they trained, but that is just, it's just amazing, amazing to me. Absolutely right. amazing to me. If you know yeah, anything no, about incredible. weapons, like, wow. Yeah. So, 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 so someone n next to you or nearby was, was struck, I believe, and, and tell me what happened then. So I wasn't in the bleachers. I, I jumped. I jumped the barrier to go in the bleachers that Brenda ate. So I was sitting right in front of the bleachers. So I saw people. I saw the. All I really saw was the man that was struck in the head, and you know, he was killed instantaneously. But, you know, so I, I you know, I jumped the bleachers to try to render aid. I mean, by the time I got there, there had already been, you know, uh, there had been like a SWAT team, and then there was like a physician EMT in there, and she had told me that the man was dead. So I, I you know, I helped. You know, carry him out of the bleachers briefly until they took him around the corner, and then they took his body from behind the bleachers to a tent so they they could evaluate him more. I don't know what they were going to evaluate at that point. Um, you know, the most shocking thing to me was his entire family was there in the bleachers with him, and they watched oh. this whole thing come down. And you know, as they were taking the body out, they put a towel over his head, and it was just soaked in blood. Oh. And you know, I, I I don't know if it was the sister or daughter, I don't know who it was, but it was a you know maybe a 20, 30 year old female. And she was hysterically crying, saying, "Is he going to be okay?" And I just, I just remember someone saying, "No, he's dead." And you know, I and in that at that point in time, I, I jumped back to the barrier to go so I could get out of there because I was, you know, it was just absolute pandemonium. Everyone was getting out of there, and you know, I, I just can't stress you enough. You know, Donald Trump came a hair breadth, hair breadth away from being assassinated tonight. 
Um, you know, I, I watched that, and like I said, he had he not turned his head at the last minute. Yeah. You know, at that that very moment, you know, he would have got hit in the head, and he would be dead. Like, you know, it looked looked like to me like the round hit him in the ear and sliced off a section of his right portion of his ear. But you and know, so, you know, he's lucky. He's a very lucky man. And so, you helped carry the body of the Briefly, individual yeah. who we, yeah. who was deceased. Did you see the others around you? Yeah, Do you know how I, how they were possibly doing? So there was a woman that was in the bleachers. It looked to me like she had got. It looked to me like she had a gunshot. She had a thrown through, through gunshot wound, either a forearm or a hand. And as they were taking her down out of the bleachers, to take her medical assistance. It looked to me like she had actually got hit in the chest, and the round went through the chest and probably went through her hand. Um, and I, I don't know. Like I didn't. I didn't get to say anything. I told him like, "Hey, look, I'm a doctor. Like I can help. We don't need it. Like we're taking her to the ambulance. She needs to get medevac." But I, I you know. I told him as they were training, I was like, I think he got, you know, a missile injury to the chest. And they were taking her to the triage to look. And, and all I know is life flight came shortly thereafter, and they flew people out. I only saw I only saw one woman injured, and it looked like she had had a gunshot wound to the chest, and then she had got hit in the hand. Like with the exit wound, like it exited out the front and got her in the hand. But she was alive. I mean, it didn't look like it was a super, you know, it didn't look like she was a critical. I mean, it right, looked like right. a critical injury. She certainly, she certainly wasn't dead. So, but they were taking her out to get her to life flight, and that's you know at that point in time, you know, I collected my stuff and I was getting out of there. So, as b before we say good, uh, b before we let you go here, doctor, I just final thoughts of just witnessing this as you did this evening. You know, I, I work as a physician, so you know I, I take care of patients, and I, I you know, and I I had stressed this to friends before. Um, there's a mental illness problem in this country, but it's not just a mental illness problem. It's a mental illness, and there's an anger problem. Like, there's just a lot of angry people, and, you know, it, it, just, it, it, it needs to stop. Um, yeah. You know, this, this political violence thing has gotten out of hand. I don't care if it's Antifa burning down cities. I don't care if it's people trying to assassinate Donald Trump. It needs to stop. Um, Doc it's it just this is the most uncivil thing that you will ever witness in your life. Absolutely, hands down in my mind. You know, in moments like this, I think that people should be able to put their politics to the side and just view everyone as fellow humans. And even if you hate Donald Trump, you can hate the guy all you want. Do you have to be hateful towards the person who lost their life that day? You know, because... I've just been looking at some of the reactions online and it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible to see how hateful some people have become. Even people who you thought better of. I mean, we got, of course, we got politicians out there spreading a lot of hateful stuff. You got big content creators like Destiny just saying absolutely disgusting, vile things. And I get it. You have political differences with Donald Trump, but someone is dead. And I'm not saying that you have to flip your politics or feel any differently. But at the very least, in this moment, you don't have to stomp all over the bodies of a fellow American that you maybe disagree with on a, a couple of different policies or something along those lines. It's absolutely disgusting. Fuck it. Fuck the dude, um, the firefighter guy. Uh, fuck Trump. Fuck the people that support him. I just want you to know, okay, just in case you're confused or it seems like I'm, uh, you don't, whatever. If one of you were in the crowd and you're a conservative fan of mine and you end up, you know, getting blown away or whatever the fuck, I'm making fun of you the next day on Twitter. I am. But it's not just the political figures and stuff in the media, even people like in the true crime community, like the docket. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Even they're saying, oh, this is fake. This is fake news. All of this is just staged. And I saw stuff like that being said as I'm also seeing the reactions of the family who lost their husband and their father. And it's just so disgusting and disappointed because you think that at least people who are involved in dealing with like true crime, you're dealing with people who are 
tragically killed all the time. You're dealing with those stories. You think at the very least you could have some sensitivity there, but to just crap all over the family of someone who just lost their father and to call it all fake and staged, I think that's just a little much. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for a good conspiracy. But there's a lot of people who think this is staged and that just sounds stupid to me. I do believe there is a conspiracy here. And the conspiracy is plain as day. Yeah, we get it. They hate Trump and they want him gone. It's right there. No, I don't think that Trump allowed someone to purposely, he, he set it all up so someone could shoot right past his head, you know, from football fields away, just shoot right past my head, make sure you don't kill me. And we're all going to stage it and I'm going to go, yeah. You know, people can't even possibly fathom that type of response that Donald Trump gave yesterday because they're so used to having a carcass as a president. They're so used to having a dementia-riddled old man that can't make it off stage as president that they can't even fathom that Donald Trump could have possibly gotten shot, raised his hand to his supporters, and walked off. But the fact is, after this, Donald Trump was out playing golf this morning, and Donald Trump has not canceled some of his upcoming events, which is scary. It's very scary. Because... I think that we're going to see other people inspired by what happened yesterday who are going to try to do this again. And I think now a lot of people are looking like, wait, this was this happened way too, way too easy. Is it this easy to do stuff like this? Because Secret Service and law enforcement totally dropped the ball either on accident or on purpose. But I got a lot of stuff to cover. We got a lot of more interviews to go through. I'm constantly updating you over on Twitter or X, so follow me over there. Let me know what you think about all of this so far down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.